everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and today I'm going to be making some really fun sibling shirts and I hope you will join me. So let me go ahead and take care of the business that I need to do and then we will get making. So I'm super excited about this. This makes a great baby gift and is also a super affordable thing that you can make and creates you know custom shirts so I'm gonna talk about and show you a couple ways that you can do this and um, it's a fun project as well so I'm gonna be making it actually with an embroidery machine today but I've also shared with you the link in the description of this video to um, a free cut file so if you want to cut it out of um, heat transfer and, and make it that way too, that's also a great way to do it. And I don't know if I've ever um, specifically mentioned this, but if you don't have a cutting machine, you can cut vinyl with your hands. Like you can trace a pattern on there and then cut it with an X-Acto knife or anything like that. So you can do heat transfer, even if you don't have any fancy machines at all. Um, and you can use the cut files that I have for any of those things. So. Um, let me share it to my group and then I think we're gonna get started so I'm glad you guys are here say hi let me know you're around um, so we have a friend who's having a baby relatively soon and so that is what I'm going to be making the shirts for and I've done two of the three. So there's a big brother and a big sister and little sister is joining the family soon. And so I thought I would make some shirts. So I started off by just getting, you could sew t-shirts and I have um, free sewing patterns if you wanted to do that, but I actually just <laughs> cheated and went to Walmart and bought um, inexpensive t-shirts. So. I bought this one in a pretty pink for Big Sis and this morning I embroidered the Big Sis design on there. So I think that looks um, super fun. And then I did this Little Sis onesie and I think my design is off just slightly. You can see how it's like not quite square. Whoops. Anyway, cute on the onesie. I have other onesies so maybe I'll end up redoing it but that turned out really cute. And then this afternoon with you, I thought we would embroider the big bro design on here. So again, I've given you a link in the description of this video to a free file that has these as cut files. If you wanna use them with heat transfer or you wanted to even trace onto, oh, you can use it with your electronic cutting machine or you can even trace and cut out with an X-Acto knife or with tiny scissors if you don't have any fancy cutting machines. You can do heat transfer just cutting out with scissors. You can totally do that. So you could use those designs for any of the projects that way. And today we are going to um, be embroidering this design. So I'm gonna show you how I'm setting it up and then we're gonna get started. So we're gonna go over here. Thank you, Jane. I always want my patterns to be used, so I love that you are doing that. Okay, um, let's see, now it's of course reversed back. All right, so I'm using the Brother um, 5200 Combo Sewing and Embroider Machine, and I'm gonna show you, show you how I set up the embroidery design, and then we'll hoop our project and we'll get started and we'll talk about some other things while that is sewing or embroidering, okay? So we're gonna go to embroidery edit. This is not a design that I've imported from somewhere. It's a design I'm going to create just using the built-in designs on this machine, okay? And again, um, if you wanna do this with heat transfer or anything, you can grab that free file from the description of this video. So I'm gonna start with a circle so let's just grab the normal circle. And I'm doing this, even though this machine can do a eight by 12 hoop, I'm doing this on a smaller scale because um, obviously the t-shirts aren't huge. Um, so I'm gonna make my circle a little bit bigger 
but I've given myself some guidelines here to not get too big. Okay, so there's the circle, and that's how I kind of started it. And then I want to go over to here to add, and I'm going to add the text. So we're going to do the same font that we did for the um, sisters, right? So you can see here. But this time we're going to write big bro. So B-I-G, and then we can enter B, I can't find anything, R-O. My kids are so funny. They call themselves, <laughs> my boys call each other bro all the time. It kind of annoys me, but I think it's cute on the shirt. Okay, so we're going to set it. Now we can see that that bro is bigger letters, and it's overlapping the circle just a little bit, so I'm going to reduce that in size. I want it to touch the circle, but I don't want it overlapping it too much. So we have to just adjust, and for each of these designs for the cis ones, I adjusted, you know, a couple things along the way. So the big, maybe we can come down a couple clicks, maybe this one will go up couple clicks. So you can just play around with and, um, you know, get it how you want, but there's a ton of options for doing that. And um, Mary, I see you said you like the shirt I have on today. Well, it's my Easy Breezy Summer Tee with a few modifications. The Easy Breezy Summer Tee shirt has like a deep V-neck and I made it more of a scoop neck. Um, and I modified the sleeve cuffs, but it's just a basic dolman and it is easy breezy. I was just thinking I need to make myself about 10 more of these shirts. So, okay, so we have big bro, looks good. We can close this and now we can go to the embroidery and we'll, we might need to edit more of this, but we will do that later, okay? Yay, Christina, I'm glad you fixed it. <laughs> that, it always seems like kind of a disaster when that happens, right? And you make a big mess with your iron. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hoop this t-shirt. But before we do that, I'm gonna put some markings on it so I know where I kind of wanna center my design. So I'm going to measure from side to side and I have, and I like to put the center of the design kind of right um, lined up with the underarm armpits. So I'm going to put my tape measure across. It's 12 and a half, so that's six and a quarter. And this is a, if it doesn't get covered with embroidery, this is an erasable fabric pen, okay? So I'm not just willy-nilly putting a mark on here, but I did put, you can see that blue mark that I put in the center, and that's where I'm going to have the center of my design. And I'll show you how easy it is to also get your design um, centered. So again, we this machine can take a much larger hoop, but I'm just using this smaller hoop. With t-shirt fabric, I like to double up my stabilizer on the back um, so it doesn't pull. And I did this same thing with those other two shirts that I did this morning. So now the tricky part is the onesie was actually kind of a pain to embroider because it's so tiny to stick the hoop in which is probably why things got pulled a little bit. Okay. So we just wiggle and maneuver the hoop inside the shirt to begin with and our stabilizer. So sometimes it's, you got kind of a lot going on. Okay. So now I'm going to see that my, try to line up my, square up my hoop, get it all on there, and then let's put this on and just double check that things are as we want. We don't have to embroider yet. And it seems like my hoop is really loose, so I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. And then, um, you know, you don't want to pull too much on the shirt because it can distort it, but I also don't want it 
loose in the hoop. So it's kind of a fine line between tightening that up and so I'm going to give it a couple more cranks here. Um, and now we can see our blue dot, can you see that, is in the center of the hoop. It actually doesn't matter really where it is because we can adjust our design placement, um, but that just gives us a reference and of course the closer it is to the center then kind of the easier it is to um, proceed. So now we have to make sure that we've moved the rest of the shirt out of the way. Okay, so there we go. So I want a clean embroidery surface. And I'm going to shove that under. And then I also have to expose the place over here, oops, sorry, that connects. So this slides in, push that down. I'm feeling underneath to make sure that none of that t-shirt you know, slip back underneath and I want to make sure that it's all under there. Okay, so now we need to come back over here and my blue dot is not quite underneath my needle. So you want your blue dot to be exactly underneath your needle. So that's where we can move our design using the arrows, which I love because then I don't have to have everything perfectly lined up before we start but now I can see that my blue dot is directly under that needle okay so that just gives us a great starting point for our design and we know that things are the way they should be so I think it might the image might be reversed right now but I'm gonna quickly thread it so I'm using white on here and um, this has an automatic needle threader but at the moment it's not working so of course I need to take it in for service um, okay so my blue dot is right under my needle I'm gonna lower my presser foot okay double check that that blue dot is right in there okay here we go now I'm not backwards Um, and we can begin embroidering. I like to do about 10, um, 10 stitches and then I like to trim this long thread here that I have from threading the machine. So I'm going to let it just really secure that stitch and then before it picks up pace, I'm going to do that. So we're going to let this embroidery, embroider and, um, while it's going, I thought today, one, we can, I'll show you my um, sister designs one more time so that you can see those that I've made. This is the accompaniment to that. We'll get a couple close-ups of the embroidery as it goes. And then I'm happy to answer if you have any questions about literally anything while we're waiting um, for this embroidery to go. So if you have anything that you wanna ask, please, go ahead and um, do so. And one thing actually I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm going to adjust the speed. So I had it really slowed down because um, I was using some thread that kept breaking. And so slowing it down is one of those. So I have it on 350 stitches per minute and I'm gonna bump that up to 600, which is a much more normal speed. Um, so this doesn't take three years to embroider and we're just using regular thread so we shouldn't really have any trouble with it um, breaking anymore so I'll give you a sneak peek over here as it goes um, let me shut this window okay so it is starting to embroider yes I'm wearing my earrings so these are the leather earrings that I started last week and actually these would look pretty with a little bit of embroidery right on that front I think as well so those are fun okay so we are making the third shirt in this sibling series and so um, to a, a boy and a girl and they're having a third who is also a girl 
So I just picked up some inexpensive t-shirts and today we're doing embroidery on them. But you could also sew t-shirts if you wanted to do this project entirely from scratch. Um, but I just did that. So um, Nancy, no, I've had this machine almost a year. I don't know if I've done any lives with it though, um, but it's fun. One, because it's another combo sewing and embroidery, so you really can use it for all the things that you wanna do. Um, but also, I love it because it has an eight by 12 hoop. And so I can really embroider the big boys if I wanted to. But of course, I couldn't stick this inside the t-shirt that I was doing today. Um, so that was hard. So Tina, this is the 5200. Um, of the essence line so it's okay let's get a peek at how this is doing okay so you can see it's working on going around the circle and I don't know if you can see but my blue dot is right in the middle of it which is where we want it to be okay so yes the stabilizer that I used is a um, a medium weight tear away here here's a scrap of it and I actually folded it in half so it's double layer under the shirt so I really do like to have um, at least two layers to avoid the t-shirt pulling okay um, my t-shirt yes this is the easy breezy tea pattern and you can find this in my shop but actually if you if you look at the pattern you'll say this is not what she made um, it has kind of a deep V on the Easy Breezy Summer Tee and I just edited the neckline to make it a simple scoop. And then instead of cuffs, um, the pattern has like a turned up cuff. I didn't turn mine up. I just made a wide cuff and I didn't um, turn it up to be the narrow cuff. So I has got a few edits, a little bit adjusted. It was a really quick sew. Some of those other features take longer and I just really wanted this to be quick. Um, but I love the dolman sleeves. It's so easy and this is a um, double brush jersey so it's super soft um, and I love it. And I should tell you I'm working on a free tank top pattern that will be released on Friday so you should check that out. And um, also sign up for the sewing summit. The link is in the description of this video. It starts next week. Our videos are all edited ready to go. It's going to be an awesome week of free learning and classes. Isn't that a pretty sound that it makes? Okay, so what is going on here is because I combined two designs, I did the circle and the letters. So after it finished the circle, it stopped and it just really wants me to push start again. So all I need to do is put the foot back down and then push start and it's going to start embroidering my letters. Okay, so it's just mesmerizing. Sometimes when I'm embroidering, my kids will literally just sit and watch it like it's a TV. <laughs> just, ah, what is she, what is doing? Um, what's the other break to leave over the back of the embroider so it's not scratchy? So, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I bet other people might have more. I, I feel like all the, the stabilizer I have is a little bit scratchy. Um, I have before like sewn a piece of felt over it. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is, that's an area I have not mastered. So I feel like there are, because even if you get the stabilizer away, the stitches themselves can be a little bit bothersome. Um, and you know, you can see here's the back and then here's the front of the shirt. So, and then as I was, I didn't even notice this until I was showing you guys. Okay, so Jane has an idea. So tender touch. So is that something you iron over the back, Jane, when you're done? You know, it'd be nice if it was just something you could iron on over the back, but you can also, you know, especially if you have a circle like this, you could just stitch around there on your machine and you wouldn't even see the stitches if you use the same color as, you know, your circle was. Um, but I just noticed when I hold up this onesie, it's centered, but it's a little bit 
cockeyed. Do you guys see that? I think I might have to redo this. What do you think? Keep it or redo it? <laughs> if I hold the shoulders up straight, it seems like it's a little bit off. I do have other onesies. I'm feeling like I should re-embroider this onesie. Okay, that's awesome. All right, so votes, find another onesie. <laughs> Let me pull out my box of onesies while it's embroidering. Um, you like it that way, Sarah? Does it, it's okay a little bit cockeyed? Um, anyway, so we've got some, you like it and redo. I, maybe I'll do both and then I can compare which one in the end. So years and years ago, I had an Etsy shop where I made felt numbers for every month and they went on the front of onesies and then you could like take pictures. So I have a number of onesies left over from that. So I do have a whole box of, of onesies. You guys are pretty mixed. That's not really super helpful when you're half and half on your, you need to come to a consensus. Here's a little three to six month one, but looks like it has something on it I'd have to wash out first. You know, and I always kind of want these to be, the baby won't notice. Of course the baby won't notice, but I don't ever, like, I'm giving this as a gift. It's not, if it was for me, I would totally keep it. But it's not for me. <laughs> you guys are kind. Okay, so here is, it is continuing to embroider. Okay, we've got the B done. And I love all the different fonts that automatically come with the machine. You know, there's so many different ones that are just built in. And, um, you know, it's fun to see just the built-in fonts. You can, you know, there's also fonts you can purchase and more fonts, but, you know, I think it's always fun just to have some of those things. So it's going back and forth. It's doing that. I will... You know, the hard part about these onesies, too, is, um, you know, getting the um, hoop inside. It might almost be nice if I sewed something because then you could just embroider first before the onesie was completed. Um, but anyway, so it's fine. So that is, um, so Sarah, yeah, so... Um, a couple of things is, oh, now it's going to the G. Um, so I just use the built-in designs for this whole thing. Sorry, the glare is bothering me back here. So I'm using, it's the Essence 5200, and I used two of the built-in designs that came with this machine to create this. So first I did just a circle and we made it a little bit larger than um, it was, but plenty, plenty big for this. And like I said, this is the five by seven hoop, even though this machine can do an eight by 12, that's a little bit overkill for kids shirts. So we did the, um, we did, and then I went and added the text. So we put big bro, and we adjust the text a little bit to make sure that it was touching the four corners, but not overlapping too much. Just like you can see, um, here, right? So the the four corners. Well, I guess this one's not quite touching. They're touching, but they're not like super overlapped. Okay, so you want to make sure it's there. So, um. Yes, anything, you should be able to do this with any embroidery machine. Any embroidery machine. This is not, this is definitely not um, just this machine. So, so, okay, so let's talk about sticky stabilizer and not hooping it. I could 
do sticky stabilizer and not hoop it, but then you still have to get the back out of the way, right? And don't you feel like then it's stretched weird by the time I, if it's not hooped, if it's just stuck and I pull all that out of the way, it's just so tiny. <laughs> you guys have um, the patches and then put on onesies. Yes, Mary, that's a great idea too. And I was thinking about that. So what I should do is just cut this one out. Since I already ruined this onesie, cut it out and then line it up and just stitch it on this one. Maybe I'll do that. Yes? Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to do this little project while that one is finishing embroidering. So I've already, I feel like, ruined this onesie with it being a little bit cockeyed. Okay. So I am going to cut it. And it'll be like a patch, like someone just said. Nancy, I have a smaller hoop, but not that goes on this machine. So I have a four by four hoop and it goes on the other machine, but then I don't have the same built in fonts. So it's like kind of a catch 22 on that one. Okay, so it finished the big at the top. It's looking awesome. We're going to lower the presser foot, push start again. We're doing this all in one color. So it's giving me the chance to um, change the color as we go, but I don't want to change the color because I don't want to. Okay, so we are just turning this into a patch. Now, the one thing you have to make sure is that when you're trimming around, you trim close, right? Because I don't want to see the fabric really, but I also want to make sure that I'm not clipping the stitches because if I'm clipping the stitches, they will start to unravel. Now, if you have, ta -da, that looks pretty cute. Um, so there, this machine cannot do this, but if you have some of the other models of um, machines that have the built-in scanner, you could put this on your onesie. Again, you'd have to figure out the whole hooping situation, but you could put it on your onesie and then it would scan it and then you could have it stitch it right on. So you could do it all in the hoop, sew the patch on. This model does not have that scanning feature and I'm not gonna attempt to line up perfectly this design because I also didn't save this design. Okay, so what I am going to do is then we will take this one and I'm not gonna sew it on, I'll pin it because I need to make sure there's like a tiny little yellow spot here I don't know if it's sitting in a box for five years or what, um, but I want to make sure I can get that out before I sew it on. So, but let's look at pinning this on here. And now I can make sure it's centered. I can make sure it's right side up. And you're right, this will keep it all soft on the inside. So I'm going to leave this stabilizer in here, okay, to keep it nice and stiff. And if you're worried about it puckering when you sew, you could put another layer of stabilizer on the back, but I honestly don't think it will pucker because this patch piece is pretty thick. So I think that's going to keep everything in place, but I'm going to have to run this little onesie through the wash. So I'll show you pinned on, but I'm not going to sew it until I make sure I can clean it up. guess what our bobbin thread's almost empty okay so there's the little sis ah it looks so cute um sarah this is the easy breezy summer tea and it's in my shop um if you're looking for it let's see here do i have a bobbin pre-wound Okay, so now to change the bobbin. <laughs> okay, so raise the presser foot. I'm gonna pull this out of the way. I usually don't cut the top thread. I usually just leave it, but I try to move this out of the way. And wow, it, it was really empty. It, it wasn't joking around when it said it was almost empty. Okay, so we put in a new 
bobbin. Now, probably one out of 10 times when I do this, um, the bobbin like isn't in right, or I don't know if I didn't put the needle up or what happens, but it gets funky and I have to go back and redo it. So let's hope that this is not one of those times. And now we kind of do have a long thread here because we, so I'm just gonna back up about two stitches and hope that that Cut this mess here. I also put an orange bobbin in, so we don't want to. We want to make sure I don't see any orange thread on the top of the design. Okay, so let's see. We have the B, and it's going to do the R and the O, and then we're going to be finished. And we'll take it off, and I'll show you. But it's looking really cool. Um, Crystal, okay, so let's talk about what machine I'm gonna use to sew this on. So, two options. I personally have two options. Um, I could take the embroidery unit off this machine. This is a combo machine, which means you can remove the embroidery unit and then you can use it just as a sewing machine. So if you go back to the home screen, which I can't right now because it's embroidering, it has sewing and then it has some embroidery options, okay? So, and then I would, I'm just going to put the same variegated color thread into my sewing machine and I'm going to just do a straight stitch all the way around. Okay, now that will remove the ability for this little part of the onesie to stretch but it's not gonna affect the getting over the head or other parts of the onesie. So I'm gonna think that it's probably okay. You could also put some um, um, like sewing adhesive on the back of this before you sew it to really hold it in place while you're stitching it on. My other option for sewing is if I don't wanna um, use this as a sewing machine, I have over here just the sewing machine that I have all the time, which is the Brother LB5000. It's also a combo sewing and embroidery, but I keep this one set up mostly for sewing because it only does the four by four hoop. Um, so I could use that to stitch this on as well. Okay, so those are kind of the two options. I'll use a knit needle, um, but I will... What color thread is that? I don't even know. Let's see, where did it go? Where did that thread go? I don't think I put it away. Maybe it rolled off. So I have the orange that I used on the shirt. Where did that? So weird. It's around here, but if I if I find the thread, I'll have to um, post it because I don't I don't know what happened to it. It was here, and now it's not. And my other thread is here, so it probably rolled off and is under the table or floating around or something. Um, you know, weird. Um, okay, so we were talking about this. You could use an overcast stitch. Yes. I could use a chain stitch on the cover stitch if I wanted. You could use a stretch zigzag for sure around here. So I will use a knit needle, um, you know, for stretch fabric. So make sure you, you're using the correct needle for the fabric. And then I also, yeah, uh, you could make one that, um, it's on the G, you guys, it's getting close. So yeah, so you could use a stretch stitch or you could just use a straight stitch or you could play around with this onesie that you cut up and see you know, what's the best stitch that you wanna use on there. That thread is going to haunt me, of course. Uh, 
and I don't see it under my table, but it's around. It, it's around. It will. It will come up. It was. It was a thread that came in a multi pack, so it's, it was nothing really special. And I don't even know if I've really used it until today, but I thought it would be cute since this one I kind of just kept the theme of the same color. And then with the gray one, I'm putting white thread. And then I thought since this is a white onesie that it would be cute to have kind of these through the three shirts that go together. So anyway, we'll still be able to get a look at how they all go together, even though this one isn't sewed on because we have it pinned on. So, and it's almost finished and then we'll remove it and we'll take a look and then we can finish up this project. Listen for the sound. So lovely. Okay, so now we can remove our shirt and you can see, see our blue dot that we wanted in the center. We did a pretty good job of getting that right in the middle. And now here's where the magic happens, is I just take my eraser, erase it, and now it's gone. Okay, so let's see if this shirt is um, level and the design is where we want it to be. So, you know, there's some threads to go back and trim and I'll do that later. Oh, this looks so cute. How fun is that? Okay, so I, I mean, I got to cut the interfacing away. That's why it's, oh, the stabilizer, that's why it's all puffy. But look at how cute that looks. That one is nice and centered. Okay, so then I flip it to the back. And um, you can see where I switched the bobbin color. <laughs> Whoops. And I, I'm never quite sure sometimes if it's tearaway stabilizer or not. I do think this one is a tearaway, but sometimes I still cut it because I just, I don't want it to rip out the stitches on this knit fabric. But there's enough stitching around the circle that it perforated it nicely. Okay, so there is our big bro shirt. Again, I did not make the shirts. I just went out and bought inexpensive t-shirts um, to go with that. So my pen, I just got it off Amazon. It's called Threaders. It says by Crafters Companion. It's an erasable ink. The little eraser is right on here and I've tried it on various types of fabric and it seems to work well. I like that it sticks around longer than air disappearing ink. That stuff disappears so fast. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then, um, and the heat stuff, and I have to get the iron out, and I don't always have the iron out. So this came in a pack of a red, a blue, and a black, I think. Yep, so here's the black one. So these came in a three pack, a red, a black, and a blue. So I have some different um, fabrics or some different options. Okay, so let's look at all these shirts together. Now that we have all three of them. So I think this is gonna make a nice gift. Look at how cute those are. Isn't that awesome? I think those are going to be so fun. Actually, I should put them up here so you guys can see them. And I have not, someone just said, did you use Tinder Touch? I have not used Tinder Touch. I need to um, try that out because obviously on the back of these are a little bit rough. Can I do this and like keep it all in place? <laughs> Cute, right? Yes, it is sold on Amazon, that pen. So if you don't order from Amazon, then I don't, I, I'm sure you can probably buy other places. So my gift for this family is 
these three shirts and then I also crocheted this blanket because I, al I always have um, a crochet project going like when we're watching movies and it feels like we've been watching a lot of movies lately with um, being stuck at home and no sports for the kids and things like that. So this is my gift for the little baby girl but I also like to give something for the siblings and um, it's fun for everybody to have. So this is, yeah, a blanket using Tunisian crochet. So it looks like knitting on the back and then it has a fun print on the front. And here's my embroidery design. So again, you can um, just use, make these designs yourself with the designs built into your embroidery machine. That's what I did. If you wanna use these at a heat transfer, I gave you a link to these same designs um, with a free heat transfer design for vinyl. So if you wanna use it and cut it on your cutting machine, that free pattern or that free file is linked in the description of this video. Um, you can check that out there. And then also, if you're not signed up for the Sewing Summit, the link is in the description of this video. Um, it's gonna be a free week of online classes. So get your free ticket, sign up now. Um, and yeah, so sign up for the Sewing Summit. We have just a few days left. It starts next Monday. It's gonna be great. I have um, a fun class as well as, I think there's more than 20 classes. So you can access all those for free next week. You just do need a ticket. So sign up using the link, grab the cut file if you want. And it's gonna be fun. Okay, so here's the pen one more time. It says Threaders by Crafters Companion on the bottom. Okay, so there's the pen one more time. Okay, so grab the download, sign up for the Sewing Summit if you haven't already, or embroider, but be inspired to make fun shirts. If you know someone having a baby, this is especially if they're, um, if it's not a first child, this is a third child. There's not a lot of baby things they need. They have three kids. You know, so I always like to make something special like this. Um, and I often, if I do have a homemade um, gift like this, I will also include a gift card or something like that because there are things you just like need diapers, you know, and things like that. So I don't always just give a homemade gift, but this family in particular, I know they do have three kids. Um, so this is what I'm giving them. So Deborah, the link is in the description of this video. It says Sewing Summit. Click on that, it'll take you and you can sign up for free to get a ticket to watch the classes all next week. So there you guys go. Um, I've loved hanging out with you today and I won't be here on Monday, but brother is continuing to do some Facebook Lives, not every day like they did. That will end as May ends, um, but I am once a month going to be doing um, a Facebook Live on the Brother Sews page with Angela, and then I'll be here on Wednesdays for most of the month. I'll be taking a break in the middle of summer because we'll be taking a vacation and I'll be doing other things for a few weeks, but I'll be here for the next couple weeks and then back in July. So I'm glad you were here. Um, yeah, check out all the links in the description of this video to get all the details for today's post, the Sewing Summit and my um, pattern group on Facebook, and I will see you back here next week. Bye.